on NBC. Live from New York, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Johnny's guest tonight are Woody Allen, William Walker, Gila Golan, Chriswell, The Muppets, and live visits to Times Square, welcoming in the New Year. Tennyson with the NBC Orchestra and me. I'm Ed McMahon. You know what is worth your life to get into this building? Yeah, it's very difficult. I was outside briefly. Am I right, friends? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. I think they're, a, they're not hostile. But they're a little sore about downstairs. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I tried to get in the door, and I was barred. I walked on the other side, and it's tough when you've been here, you know, three and a half years. You know, you walk in, and the guard says, who are you? Yeah. I mean, it gives you a funny feeling, really. But, so I know how you feel, friends, and we're sorry that you were uh, detained downstairs. But there was some problem in the building. They could not allow the doors to just be open as they normally would for some vandals or something. I don't know. So we're awfully, we like to apologize. Remember last I didn't get a chance to see you. Yeah. And I'm, I don't mean to interrupt, but I have, I, all day I've been trying to see you. I have a bit of a problem. I have some guests in town tonight. Yeah. And I wonder if you could you handle a small check for me? No. A what? Just a small check. Money? Just a little small check. I didn't get any cash. A little tiny, little small. Oh, check. get out of here. <laughs> have you seen this? It's a real check. Look at this. They claim you can write a check on anything, the back of a menu or anything, as long as you put the bank in your name. And there's a check. I'd like to make that out for about. Uh, Three cents. Would you handle that? Beautiful. I can just about handle that. In cash? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what were you starting to say about last year? Well, I was remember last year when we finished work here, last New Year's Eve. Remember we couldn't get out of the building? Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, seriously. Yeah. We couldn't get... Was, it may happen again know. tonight, friends. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we may be locked here all night. I don't One thirty or a quarter till two and none of us could get out of here. Something must happen. There must be a reason because every night you can come in, all the doors. Tonight every door was closed and yes. you had to go through a certain system. Just so. security for our Prince John. Was it to protect our Prince? Yes, it's to protect our Prince. They have soldiers downstairs and the drawbridge is up. Really? <laughs> Are the sharks in the water? They're in the water, boy. We go to great lengths here to protect our star. We want nothing to happen to him. May I place... Kitch has got two children to get through college. I have four. We want everything. Our star must be protected at all times. We must very be careful about it. May I play some music for the festivities that will later proclaim the heralding of our prince? <laughs> After that, you'd have to. <laughs> I leave everything to you, he, sir. He loves the German polkas. He does? He loves them, so I got one from Lichtenstein. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding. Oh, wait till he gets all of you. <laughs> and...
the most disreputable performances I've ever seen. <laughs> Begging the question like that, with that hokey whistle oh. and horn. The hokey polka. You shouldn't start out the program with a hokey polka. It's written that way. With a whistle like that? Yes, of course. Sure. That appears in the music? That's called traps, yes. Oh, he says it with a straight face, man. Johnny Carson will be here very shortly. He's on his white horse outside. He, he has said a big John. spear. I didn't say one word, John. He was doing all the talking he about that. He has a big that. spear. He was saying all those bad things about you. I'm your pal. He has a lace time. collar on. He was the one that said that, John. We'll be back shortly. At least I will. I don't know about him. Johnny Carson will be here. Please stay tuned. This New Year's Day, NBC is a panorama of spectacle and sport. Starting Saturday morning at 10.30, 9.30 Central Time, with a fabulous Orange Bowl parade in color direct from Miami. Immediately following, the scene changes to Pasadena, California, for the world-famous Tournament of Roses, the Queen of Pageants in color. Then it's kickoff time for the great bowl game. First, Missouri versus Florida in the Sugar Bowl. Next, Michigan State battles it out with UCLA in the Rose Bowl. Then in Florida, Nebraska tangles with Alabama for the Orange Bowl crown. All in color and all exciting. Yes, all day long, the great parade. The top football drills and more are all yours in color Saturday, New Year's Day, on NBC. When you get in your car, what's the first thing you do? Put the key in the ignition, adjust the mirror, release the handbrake, and drive, right? Wrong. Dead wrong. If you didn't include buckling your seatbelt as part of your routine. Here's why. According to the National Safety Council, four out of five accidents happen within 25 miles of home. That means while you drive, even short distances from home, you're vulnerable to maiming accidents, even death. But when you buckle your seatbelt, you have an extra margin of safety between you, the wheel, the dash, and windshield of your car. See what we mean? So every time you get in your car, do this. Put the key in the ignition, adjust the mirror, release the handbrake, and make it a habit. Always buckle your seatbelt. We're back, Ed. Oh, would you, <laughs> would you care for a limerick? Oh, by all means, yes. <laughs> a certain young lady named Hannah was caught in a flood in Montana. Banana. As she floated away, her bow, so they say, accompanied her on the piano. <laughs> I have nothing to do with the security of the building. If they won't let you, it's not my responsibility. Yes. <laughs> there was a young fellow from Fife who had a big row with his wife. He lost half his nose, two-thirds of his toes, one ear, seven teeth, and his life. <laughs> Perhaps music would be more in keeping. Uh, what, uh, what do you have to do? You can announce the selection. It will take a minute or two.
you understand? You cannot be disreputable like this. The prince has not come out yet. When he comes out, may I be disreputable? Yes, you can be as disreputable as you always are, but not till the prince comes out. I tore my music. <laughs> well, you are a murderer. Uh oh. I did. Oh! What happened? There was a sword just came from the woodwind section, right? <laughs> Please explain to all of us what happened. Well, you know what I said? I tore up my music. Yes. Somebody asked, applauded. I mean, in this section back here. Somebody back here. Could you pinpoint? Names, please. No names. No Could names. we ask the other members to tell us who it was? Oh, I think Doc would be happy to tell Doc, us. who was it, Doc? No names. <laughs> Don Ashworth, please stand. No? Anything Don Ashworth says is all right, because he's a sailor. He's a sailor? He's a sailor. He's that gives him some special sailor. validity? <laughs> he's a drunken sailor. I don't know. Would you like to try one more limerick? Please? Oh! No! <laughs> yes, yes! Let me, wait, wait. Perhaps, perhaps if I frame it a little, how would you like to hear the last limerick of 1965? Yes! <laughs> there was a young man of devices whose ear were of different sizes. The one that was small was of no use at all but the other won several prizes. Johnny will be here very soon, I hope. Stand by. Oh, See the Orange Bowl Parade tomorrow morning at 10.30, 9.30 Central Time. From New York, live, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Johnny's guests tonight are Woody Allen, William Walker, Gila Golan, Chris Well, The Muppets, and live visits... Times Square, welcoming in the new year. Skitch Henderson, the NBC Orchestra, and me, I'm Ed McClain. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Tonight Show. Johnny Carson will be here in just 60 seconds. Right now, a word from one of our sponsors, L&M Filter Cigarettes. The l and side is for people who want taste in a cigarette and plenty of it. Come on over to the l and side, just for the taste of it. Venez tous du côté l and m Venez-y comme tous les gens du goût. Venez donc, vous serez content de vous. Oui, venez tous du côté l and m Come on over to the l and m side. Just for the taste of it. And now, here's Johnny. May the bird of paradise <laughs> lay an egg in your old Lang Syne. <laughs> All together now, ready? Real quick. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. <laughs> oh, they, you started early this year, didn't you? Applause is not necessary on New Year's Eve.
Just, uh, just kiss me at midnight. <laughs> Sit down, sir. I said midnight. <laughs> you like, like this? Nice. This is, my, this is my simplicity jiffy pattern 1097. <laughs> I'm Johnny Carson, and I say that because the tuxedo fools a lot of people. Really, last time I wore this, remember, some months ago, a little old lady came running down the aisle, saying, you're riding high now, you punk, but when Falachi squeals, you'll burn. <laughs> you see, what? Little old lady said that, yeah. Our orchestra? Yeah. Now, you see, they are not used to wearing black tie once a year they get their tuxedos out, and it was dangerous tonight, because in the first 15 minutes they started to play, 150 moths came out <laughs> and flew right for Ed McMahon's nose. <laughs> They're attracted. Now, Skitch is different. Skitch is used to, you know, formal dress. As a matter of fact, he wore that same tuxedo, or tail, no, tuxedo, when he was a cabin boy on the Bismarck. <laughs> <laughs> our show is uh, live tonight. Our audience is a little can, but our show... <laughs> See, now, what sometimes happens on this show, those of you who've watched it probably know, uh, we tape it usually earlier in the evening, and sometimes the uh, censors at NBC occasionally will... <laughs> bloop out a little word or something that they think is going to, you know, upset the country. But tonight we are live. Right. But the lady from the NBC censorship department is here in the audience, and she is prepared at a moment's notice to rush down here and stuff her bustle in my mouth. <laughs> She's no youngster, eh? No. Oh. You know, it's hard to believe. Another 20, 27 minutes, my Playboy calendar is shot. <laughs> we, have, we have a surprise at midnight tonight, not just because it's New Year's, but at midnight on our stage, Mike Quill will appear <laughs> and turn a subway into a pumpkin. <laughs> Mayor-elect Lindsay is taking a very positive view about it. He'll only have been mayor five hours, but he already has developed the world's largest fallout shelter. <laughs> the subway system, you see. <laughs> you folks at home probably wonder why we're not using a live audience. <laughs> now, if there is a strike tonight, folks, you may all have to sleep here tonight. Which uh, <laughs> may be the highlight of the evening's entertainment since we, all, <laughs> since we only have one pair of pajamas. So it, <laughs> I'm not going to kid you this year. I kidded Ed last year we were live also, and I kidded him about having maybe one or two too many. I mean, after all, anybody has trouble, you know, undressing, you know, the morning after. But above and beyond that, there are not many people who do it in the Holland Tunnel, either. <laughs> We're going to switch to Times Square later on. Yes. Ben Grauer is on top of the Astor Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> ben has been there since last New Year's Eve. <laughs> he has a little Quonset hut, and Ben just moves in, and we send packages over during the year. But well, we'll cut over there and see what's going on in Times Square in New York. And I know you're in a good mood, because it's New Year's Eve, and I peeked out through the curtain before I came out here a few moments ago, and I saw a man in the back there with a, you know, one of those swinging one of those noisemakers. Then I looked a little closer, and he had his wife's dentures on a swizzle stick. <laughs> you know it's a hot group tonight. We have Mr. Woody Allen, we have William Walker, Gila Golan, we have Criswell. We'll be here prognosticating for us tonight. Really? Yes, it's going to predict. <laughs> the Muppets are with us, so it looks like a great show. Thanks for dropping by, and we'll be right with you in a second. Am I all right tonight? I love that. You can't, you can't pick on me too much tonight, can you? Beautiful. 
I'm not too mad about the tie. But I like the wrist. It's a nice outfit he has. Got nine pair of pants with it and a whistle. <laughs> Now here's Caroline O'Connor, Standard Brand's own Miss New Year's. Hi, everybody. What is this all about, Caroline? Well, I'll tell you, this is Chase and Sanborn Coffee. We're uh -huh. having a swinging party, aren't we? A swinging party with coffee? Why, of course. Who ever heard of a good party without heftier Chase and Sanborn Coffee? Maybe that's, that's right, I think. You really think yeah, so? Yeah, I'll I try know. some. <laughs> That's for the crew. Oh, you're playing favorites again? No, See that? no. Now, Ed, don't you worry, because you'll get your Chase and Sanborn later. A big cup, heftier with extra flavor. That's what I want. Extra richness. Meanwhile, how about giving me some help? All right. Why don't you pour these just delicious planter's dry roasted nuts in this bowl? Oh. These are great, aren't they? Oh, they sure are. They're crispy good. Cashews. Go ahead. My now you're gonna... Oh, he <laughs> loves his work, this man. <laughs> That's wonderful, you know. They're just so dry to the touch. Mm-hmm. See? They are, really. Mm -hmm. You know that? And so light to the taste. You know, dry roasted may means they're made absolutely with no fats or oils that add calories. Are you trying to uh, tell me something? To... Oh, no, Ed. I wouldn't do that. I'm just reminding everybody the best of parties are even better with heftier Chase and Sanborn coffee and Planter's dry roasted nuts. I don't know how many years Ben Grauer has uh, been seeing in the New Year from Times Square, but I know Ben Grauer has been in this business long before a lot of us were even around, and he is one of the great announcers. He's been with NBC for years, so we're going to cut over to Times Square to see what's going on over there. So, Ben, if you can hear me, we have no communication directly outside of... I assume they have a monitor on top of the Aster? Yes, they do. So, Ben... <laughs> many things. <laughs> yeah. How are things over there, Ben? Can you hear me? I hear you fine. Hello, Johnny. I hear you fine, but I can't believe you. Is this New Year's Eve? Uh, I left uh, Beverly, uh, uh, Wilshire Boulevard today, really, to come here to the cold east. And it's colder there than it is here. It's 60 degrees, and this is, without question, the warmest. Well, I, no coat, no, uh, no gloves, the usual muffler. Uh, the crowd has assembled earlier the, this year because, well, I don't know, maybe they just feel hopeful about 66, about the peace talks that are going on, or the good weather's brought them out. But you can look way down there to uh, 40th Street and way up there to 48th Street, and it's solid with people. Right now, you're looking at the Allied Chemical Tower. We used to call it the Times Tower, the venerable building of the New York Times, where 60 years ago, the first uh, sphere dropped down to indicate the passing of the old, the beginning of the new. There's the ball at the top. See it right there? Well, that ball will start dropping at 11.59, Johnny. And when it hits bottom, it'll be... Uh, 12 straight up, it'll be 1966, it'll be the year of uh, no more cabaret and theater tax and the year of higher social security tax, so it's uh, 6 to 1. There's the situation here, oh, crowds, I would say that by my uh, ear of some, an eye of 20, 25 years here, that there are 700, 800,000 people. We've had it as low as 400,000 and as high as a million right after the war ended. This is going to be a big, big show here in Times Square. I know all your friends will want to stay with it. There's the story, Johnny. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> what Ben say? <laughs> it's rough to hear with those people. It is. They have more people there this year, I think, than they had last year. You said they got it earlier. I guess the weather that's so nice here. That used to be called the, uh, the Times Building, and it is now the Allied Chemical Tower. One Very of the brand pretty new building. buildings here. Well, we're going to go back. I can still hear them coming through something here. There they oh. are. Ben's got absolute control. He just goes like that and they stop. <laughs> We're going to cut back to Times Square in a couple of seconds, but we thought... What? No, no, I'm just... Thinking we thought it. tonight, since the New Year is only about 17, 18 minutes away, that we would invite a gentleman who has been with us before. He, uh, he always entertains us with some of his startling predictions. So we thought we would get a jump on everybody and find out what Criswell will predict for 1966. Would you welcome Criswell?
Happy New Year to you, Criswell. It is a great honor again to be with you and all of your friends on New Year's Eve of 1965. And I'd like to say greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives, whether we want to or not. Well, that's... You can't argue with that. <laughs> My first prediction is that I predict that the year of 1966 will be a year of tricks, <laughs> deceit, and deception. 1966. He knows. Yeah. And I Art Stark predict. has been working on his expense account already. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a bad, bad year. Uh, excuse me, I don't mean that. That's why I interrupt here. I further predict that many executives will go on strike in protest against the many new union regulations. Well, what kind of executive? Just executives in general? The average executive, yes. Right. Have our NBC executives gone on? No. They were protesting last week, remember? They, were they? They burned their washroom keys. Oh, yes, yes, I predict a family coat of arms will be the new fad in America. Yes, a new family American pride in your own personal family right here in America. And the family coat of arms will be your number one fad for 1966. That's interesting. You have a coat of arms? No, I, I, I have one. I'm not aware of it. I, but I'm going to get one tomorrow. It would be better if you want to, you know, come out right. I predict a dude and a nude ranch will open somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> a dude and a nu nude. That's right. Somewhere in the Midwest. And I'll lay odds you won't hear a discouraging word either. <laughs> <laughs> I predict that 10,000 doctors will refuse to practice under Medicare and be replaced by doctors trained by the Pentagon. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting. I predict that the slowest races of all times at the Olympics in Mexico City, due to the difficulty of breathing in that high altitude. Well, that, now that, that makes sense. Remember, you were... Yes, I... Ed was in Tijuana once and had difficulty breathing. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> And here is a rather long-range prediction, because I predict that in 1976, people will no longer be buried due to a shortage of land. In fact, there will practically be no more land left anywhere. And I predict that these people will be cremated and placed in compressed, placed compressed in tiny cubes about the size of dice. That's really crapping out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I predict that within two years, there will be the discovery of people living inside the Earth at the North Pole. Didn't somebody write a book years ago uh, with, that, with that theory or something? There were people... Admiral Byrd, yes. And it will be proven in this year. No, there was a book written. Yes. Uh, Definitely. About Bird had made a discovery That's because right. they saw vegetation up at that part That's of the country and that there was supposed to be an opening in the up around there and people actually live inside That's the right. earth. A, a whole racial strain completely disappeared in North America and that is exactly where they think they have gone, beneath the North Pole. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I predict that America will reach the highest point of prosperity in March of 1966. And I predict a woman's professional football team next season. <laughs> the Cleveland Beiges. <laughs> In fact, I stake my professional reputation on that very prediction. Well, that's going out on a limb. <laughs> I predict. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, 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 oh. Oh, you know. I predict that rings in the nose will come into fashion in 1966. Well, have you seen men wearing rings already in their ears, aren't Oh, yes. They? So, uh, is this for men or women, or...? Both. Both. I regret to predict an invasion of flying cockroaches on the West Coast. <laughs> uh, 
Are we going out there in March? Yes. <laughs> Our show is going out. That's probably what you have yeah. in mind. There. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> I predict that hotels and motels will install television sets with tow control. <laughs> with tow? With tow, with your tow. Control. Save time, I guess. <laughs> I predict they will discover that one of the five great lakes is slowly emptying out and will dry up completely. Well, now that would really, that would yeah. be a big problem, wouldn't it? Sure would. You don't want to take a, can't mention the name. No, I oh. can't mention the lake. Oh. But actually it is slowly emptying out. And I predict in the field of science and nutrition, there will be three new wonder foods. Number one, it is a food that will make people honest. Number two, it will be a food to make you forget. And number three, there will be a food to make people more considerate of each other. And now, due to many experiments, of course, when rats eat this type of food, the rats have a better memory. Well, they've already tried this out. Oh, yes. It's oh. definitely, it's off the drawing boards. It's in to practice at the present time. A rat that has a better memory. Hmm. What's a rat got to remember? <laughs> well, I mean, I could. I wasn't, you know, didn't want to medically examine it. But. And now I'd like to fearlessly predict the most exciting event to come in 1966. Yeah. I predict there will be an American on the moon, a 20th century Columbus of outer space in our very own time. Now, I'll applaud, I'll more for that one. Well, Chris, well, I thank you for being with us again. Thank you very much. I'll look forward to those predictions. And I hope to see you in California. We'll see you out there in a couple months. Thank you very much. Now, for antiseptic throat aids, here's Ed, who's an authority on three-way action. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as to say that, John. I'm not an authority on three-way action, but F and F, the folks that make F and F, and of course the antiseptic throat aids, they are authority on the three-way action that you want when you're suffering from painful minor sore throat pain. When you have a raspy, rugged throat and it hurts, well, that's why there's salicylamide in antiseptic throat aids to soothe painful throat membranes. That's why there's Banacol to kill millions of germs on contact. And that's why there's terpenhydrate to relieve congestion. Relief? Yes. And pleasant tasting too. You'll like the cool minty flavor of antiseptic throat aids as they dissolve in your throat. Now remember for a cold, follow whatever advice you think best. Rest, aspirin, or a cold capsule. But for the miserable sore throat that you have, get soothing relief with Antisoap Throat Aids. Brought to you by the folks who make F&F &F cough lozenges, which also contain germ-killing Banacol. We thought we ought to check just briefly uh, with Ben, <laughs> see how things are progressing. We're just going to cut away for a few seconds. So, Ben, uh, how are things going over there? We're doing fine, Johnny. I, I predict, I've done a lot of predictions the last few minutes, I predict that in that crowd down there, 1,843 girls are going to be kissed in the next minute by total strangers. In fact, it's going on right in front of my eyes. They're youngsters, and they're using every opportunity for fun and adventure as the minutes creep along towards the magic midnight. The ball is still suspended 100 feet above the Allied Chemical Tower. The crowd grows constantly. The weather remains mild. The uh, climax is predictable, 52, that means that eight minutes from now, it'll be crashing into 1966. We'll be seeing you then, Johnny, what do you say? Say about three minutes to go before the big moment. How about it? Okay, Ben, we'll be back with you. How would you like to be in the middle of that mob? No, thank you. Did, could you hear how many people did he say were over there? A million, 400,000? Oh, it couldn't be that. No. Couldn't he be said that. about a thousand. Count them again, Ben. <laughs> 
1,400 to be kissed. We want it, what? Young ladies would be kissed by strangers. Oh, well, that's all right. We couldn't think of any better way to start off the new year with a pretty gal. And this one is a real beauty. Mm. She's with us in California. Yeah. She's a delightful young actress who's had good success in this country. She's from Israel. Would you welcome Gila Golan? <laughs> Stuff comes right off, doesn't it? I'm so sorry. Don't you wear that uh, kiss-proof stuff? No, I guess they haven't got one here. <laughs> How are you? Fine, thank you. It's really very good to be here in the New Year's. How'd you spend last New Year's? What'd you do? You remember? Uh, I think I was in Times Square. You're kidding me. Yes. You would actually go there? Yes. I mean, it's well, I'm a it, tourist in this country. I should see everything. How long have you been with us now? Well, Let's uh. Now, close to four years. Yeah, you've had a busy year in the motion picture field, haven't you? Yes. How uh, many pictures? Now, uh, I'm in the business, show business, about uh, a year and a half, and I've made Ship of Fools. Ship of Fools. Uh, as an ugly duckling, and then I've made Our Main Flint, which is going to be released in January. Yeah. And Didn't you do a picture with Jerry Lewis? Yes, Three Honey Cows with Janet Lee. And Marianne Mobley and Leslie Parrish. Three on a couch. Yes. Yeah. You know what it is all about. I'm playing a part of a um, cookie girl which hates men but loves cowboys. Aren't cowboys men? Well, not in the picture. <laughs> 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 oh, I can bite my head. <laughs> well, well, no, uh, it's really, uh, uh, I sort of don't know to word my surprise, but uh, it's, um, uh, according to the picture, I was hurt by a, a man that uh, portrayed a cowboy, but as a foreign girl, I admire movies, American movies, uh, yeah. with cowboys and string and all that. I think I got it. I'm not sure. <laughs> you ought to be with Ben tonight. I can't understand. <laughs> we'll be right back. A word from your local station. some party we got going here. <laughs> we are live in New York tonight from Rockefeller Center. We have, what, about 30 or 40 minutes. seconds before we're going to go over and, uh, and see what happens. Now, as I rem hmm? Going into midnight. Yes, going right into midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? That's the, that's the new year, you see, 12 o'clock, when, when the big hand and the little hand are both on 12. <laughs> it's our producer. <laughs> we'll be working with Clay soon. Uh, <laughs> We're going to go over there, and that, that, that ball on top of the Allied Chemical Tower starts to fall down, right? Yeah. And uh, at the stroke of midnight, it's... Where is it? Well, I don't, it just comes down somewhere, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's an exciting moment, and we're going over there right now. Ben, we're going to turn it over to you for, for a few minutes. All right, Johnny, ben? you know how they do it? While astronauts whirl around the Earth, they do it with pulley power. And it's going to happen actually up there in a minute and uh, 40, 28 seconds. It's midnight in Times Square, about a minute, you know, what am I saying, minute 10 to go. The crowd has built slowly but forcefully. You can hear the swell of that noise. There are signs sprinkled all through from youngsters hoping they'll get their hometown on the TV camera. Many of them say just happy 66. They've been shooting off those six inch or whatever salutes, making a big, big bang, trying to say hello to the new year of 66 while a couple of miles from here, Mayor Lindsay is biting his fingernails and Michael Quill is holding us in the threat of a transit strike in New York. But inevitably, the clock is starting to show that the ball is moving. If you look up there, see it's moving from the 100-foot tower on the Allied Chemical Building. It used to be the Times Tower. Now the Allied Chemical Tower, it's 100 feet, 50 rather, 40, 30, 20, 
The ball is slowly moving as the seconds tick off. About 25 seconds to go. When it hits the bottom, it'll be the new year. And from Cresc Isle in Maine to Mel Sinfilia in California, there are wishes for happiness across this broad land in the new year ahead. Just a few seconds to go, and then 2,000 watts in eight balls means 16,000 watts of happiness for the new year. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! There on the side of the Allied Chemical Tower, an innovation we have it spelled out in great big letters. Didn't know about that, 1966. So there's the end of the year, which was featured with the escalation of the war in Vietnam and the Dow Jones hitting a new high, just 30 points short of 1,000 just today. Boom at the home front, increasing war overseas. Maybe this crowd feels and senses that there's, besides the warmth and good weather we're having, a sense of hope as Harriman and Kohler and Goldberg scurry about the world on the peace of Benson. And the year that's going to bring us, incidentally, no more taxes and cabarets and theaters and an increase in Social Security tax for Medicare. So take it or leave it, you've got the new year of 1966. And here in Times Square, the traditional crowd, which had been building up to maybe 700,000, one of the biggest we've seen in years, just like the lemmings of Norway is scurrying off to their homes, their parties. They may have a transit strike. Some of them may be foot sore and weary. We don't know the story on that yet, nor does a New York's newest Republican mayor, first in 20 years, Lindsay know. Meanwhile, Mayor Wagner, who's seen 12 of these, is basking in Acapulco. We wish him a happy year, too. There's the story in Times Square. To you, Johnny Carson, and to all your friends, this is Ben Grauer saying the very best to you in this new year as we look at this annual renewal of one of the amazing spectacles of American life. Why the young people, most of the young people, gather here in this triangle made by 7th Avenue and Broadway, we don't know. But they do it year after year. They'll continue to do it until there is no more radio, TV, or any communication. A manifestation of the American spirit. Happy 66 is the word from Times Square. Now this is Ben Grauer saying the best to all of you. And so long from the Hotel Astor in Times Square. Back to you, Johnny. See the Orange Bowl game Saturday at 7.45, 6.45 Central Time. What a sloppy bunch of dancers we've got. Thank you, Bridget. Hey, that was fun. We're going to go over... Uh, we'll go back in a moment and see how Ben's doing, but right now... <laughs> here's Miss Carol, I know Connor, sales lady par excellence for Standard Brands. Happy 1966, Caroline. Thank you very much, Johnny, and the happiest of New Year's to you, too. And you know, I'm really looking forward to this year and being part of The Tonight Show with all of the good foods from Standard Brands. You know, most of these fine products are already favorites of yours. Smooth, creamy, royal pudding. The one that always comes out right. Blue Bonnet, the favorite margarine of millions of women all over America. Chase and Sanborn coffee, heftier with extra flavor. Royal Gelatin, the only gelatin made with vitamin C. 
new delicious no-bake royal cheesecake and brighter tasting tender leaf tea. And that's only the beginning. New members of the Standard Brands family of fine foods will be appearing this year and you will hear all about them from me. Meanwhile, from all of us at Standard Brands, to all of you, thank you for counting on us for the best in foods. And a very happy new year to you all. 1966? Hmm. How long does that take you before you can write it on your checks at the bank, though? March the 3rd. About March, I'm yeah. finally getting around to it. Another year. Now, uh, next year, we'll, we'll, we'll be here, I assume, next year at this time. I intend to be here. Well, I'll be here. Yep, you'll be here. And, uh, you show up. <laughs> if I show up, you'll show up. So we thought we ought to uh, go back and see how Ben is doing and let him know that his duties are over. So we take you now to <laughs> Times Square. And Ben, it's uh, all over for another year, and you Watch can go moment. home now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, that's, that's showbiz. <laughs> now that you've witnessed this tremendous excitement going on at Times Square, our roving NB, you're going to have to watch the monitors here in the studio because we are ready to cut in from around the country and show you how some other people are spending New Year's Eve. First, we take you to the Merrymakers dancing at the Hotel Roosevelt. The music by the one and only Guy Lombardo and his Royal Canadians. So let's take it away. <laughs> there they are over there. <laughs> Wowie. New Year's Eve, of course, isn't all fun. Now at Subway Strike Headquarters, our new Mayor Lindsay is in arbitration with Mike Quill. <laughs> Down in Greenwich Village, gay crowds applaud those famous entertainers, the Dolly Brothers. <laughs> And out in Hollywood at the Roosevelt Cine Grill, one of our staff is still trying to get back to New York. <laughs> now, here's a shot of the musicians who was told he could go out and have a drink on the house. <laughs> now, we'll switch to a party in our control room where one of the secretaries is having a little New Year's Eve drink here. <laughs> and over at my place, we've invited some close friends in for a little evening of meditation. Those are... <laughs> Oh, those are just some quiet scenes happening around the country. Oh, me. Oh. I think that's about enough of that. That's fine. So that's what's happening around the country. Oh. So, what were we talking about? I forgot now. Uh, you know, but I thought maybe we could play that, uh, a game. You know, it's about... Yeah, it's New Year's Eve, some games. Right. You know, it's about quotations. It's, uh, I'll give you lines of quotations of, uh, which uh, famous people say, might have said. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will tell me what, who might have said this. You give me a famous With quotation quotations. that somebody did say. Did say. And you give me the name of somebody who might have said it. All uh, right? Now, let's see. Do I make myself clear? I like, so. for instance, water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. Am I supposed Mayor to guess Wagner. who said that? Oh, Mayor Wagner said that? Yeah. Oh, I see. You, you put somebody modern to a, an old quote. Is that it? Yes. All right. Uh, or Dean Martin. <laughs> <laughs> you got the idea? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Okay. I've not yet begun to fight. Sonny Liston. Right. Uh, is that the right answer? Or are we going to make our yes, own answers it is. up? It is. Good, one for you. Oh, okay. oh yeah, started no, off. No, but it's not. Started it's off not the New you, Year's with you a. See, it's up to you, really. I don't know. Oh, Who I see. might have said it? Who so might have said it? I see. It is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Eddie Fisher. <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that? Criswell. Criswell? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll do the snappers. You <laughs> just blow that horn. Uh, oh, all right. I think I got the idea. All right. Yeah, sure. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. President Johnson. <laughs> well. Well. Sure. Sure. Who 
did say that? Do you know really who said that? No. I really didn't. Who did say that originally? <laughs> Jim? Jim Maxwell should know that. <laughs> Sorry, Jim, we didn't mean to wake you up. <laughs> okay. A woman's work is never done. <laughs> Go ahead. A woman's work is never done. Well, I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Discarded three already. I've already thrown three out. <laughs> I wouldn't touch that one with a fork. <laughs> Make up your own joke. I never met a man I didn't like. <laughs> Here we go again. Zsa <laughs> Zsa Gabor. Said I could have said it. Yeah. The biggest... <laughs> Chris <laughs> well no. Uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. What? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> Liz Taylor. <laughs> you should have never opened this up. <laughs> That's a funny idea. <laughs> Hey, that's fun. We should have some party games. Can't we bob for apples? You don't do that on New Year's Eve. What? You don't do that on New Year's Eve. I do it on New Year's Eve. <laughs> you get a tub of gin, and you bob for apples, and you get all the apples out of, out of the way as fast as possible. All righty. Now, here's a word on no. five days. Here's a word on five days. The new Annie first with deodorant, just a little bit stronger. Start the day with five day feel shower clean all day. Keep odor away with five day feel shower clean all day. New five day deodorant pads really do let you feel shower clean all day. They actually clean odor away as you rub protection on. Use one each day, throw it away. Five day is not just a deodorant. It's a deodorant and an antiperspirant, both contained in one convenient pad. Inside are two, yes, two, most effective ingredients. One protects you against odor, the other against perspiration, so... Start the day with five day, feel shower clean all day. Five day pads, cream, roll on. Just a little bit stronger to protect you against odor and perspiration, too. Well, tonight, because it's a new year, we looked high and low to find the most sophisticated, suave personality around. Woody was with us two years ago yes. on New Year's Eve, so we no, thought we might as well forget. have him back tonight, because he wasn't with us last year. Would you welcome a most bright, amusing gentleman, Mr. Woody Allen. I'm fantastically excited. Are you really? I am. I've been waiting all year long. And when 12 midnight comes, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> uh, I, I hate to be the first one to tell you, but about 15 minutes ago was the, was the start of the New Year's. It's over, right? It's over. I spent New Year's for the first time in my life together. And it's touching in a way, and I'd like to thank the many fans and friends who share with me tonight the welcoming end of 1966, in which I'm looking forward to a year of some sorrows and sighs and some slow moments. Do I look like a sorrow? No, you don't, my beauty. And some delicate moments. Is this Absolutely. one of your resolutions? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 15 minutes into the new year. I get really sloppy sentimental me as I... Really? Yes, I've had some uh, champagne for dinner. Champagne? And absolutely, and I'm just fighting weight. Remember two years ago we had champagne here on the set? Yes. And that was the last year we've had it. <laughs> they said no more of that. People still ask me if, if I was drunk two years ago 
New Year's Eve, and, and I was not drunk. I was pleasantly high, and I, I went home after the show, and I jumped naked into a vat of cold Roosevelt dimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's... What do you normally... That's how I get my kicks. Really? Like that. Everybody, has, everybody has their little, uh, you know, thing going. What, what do you normally do on New Year's? Are you one of these people who goes to parties or goes to a nightclub and... Uh, last year, New Year's, I think. I was in Paris when we, we did What's New Pussy Get in Paris, and I was writhing in my hotel room with, uh, with agony uh, New Year's Eve. I, I, I couldn't get a date for New Year's Eve last year. I was, I, I was in, living in Paris for about four months, and the only French word that I could learn to say was potage, which means soup, soup. you know? And I used to accost strange women on the street and say potage, you know? <laughs> And if the girl was Jewish, she would make it for me, you know. <laughs> you, uh, you were around some beautiful women there, I mean, you know. Oh, can I tell you something? Sure. I have, I'm, I, I have always, you know I'm a connoisseur from beautiful women. Oh. That's, my, that's my thing in life. I would rather be with a beautiful woman than almost anything else. And, um, except my stamp collection. If it came to an out-and-out -out choice. Yes. Yeah. And the, the great woman of the world for me was always Bardot. She, I always oh. felt that she was, without a doubt, the greatest thing in the world. And uh, Sophia Loren, I liked. I was not crazy about Sophia Loren physically, <laughs> but I'm having an operation, and that's going to be changed now. <laughs> and also Julie Christie, the, the girl who starred in Darling, I also felt was spectacularly yeah. beautiful. And I never met any of them or anything. And in the last... Ten days, I met all three of them. Really? Can you believe that? I, I was at a party with Bardot, and I lunched with Sophia, and I was out listening to jazz with Julie Christie one evening. Wow. Yeah. Well? You want to hear about it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, nothing happened. <laughs> Tall girl, short girl? Great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm living vicariously now. Uh, well, Bardot I found, uh, good. Good quality, basic. Uh, basic good quality. All 32 teeth, you know, and, um, poise. And Loren, I found a little tall for my taste. She was, uh, a little too what we call zaftic, you know. Uh, <laughs> zaftic is, is, an, is a, I don't know what kind of word it is. I guess it's, uh... Yiddish. Is it Yiddish? Yes. Yeah. And it means uh, healthy, abundantly conceived, and. and um, <laughs> I think that nails it pretty good. And I had a fabulous time. I, I was speaking to. Um, so I had known Sophia's husband, Carlo Ponte. I hate to drop names like this, but I, I'm going to. And two years. He wanted me to do uh, a film, write a film. We were talking about it, and. Uh, it, it was originally, the talk was to star Sophia Loren and, and uh, Marcello Mastriani. And I had lunch with, uh, with Loren. And I suggested that in place of Mastriani, that since I had appeared in What's New Pussycat, and it was a love story as opposed to a comedy, that I ought to play opposite her in the film. And uh, she laughed. Uh, <laughs> She left for about an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> then she made a funny Italian uh, gesture of some sort, and... and um... <laughs> that was the end of the lunch, yeah? Yes, yes. So she, she, she left and blew the check over to my side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> there you were. But it was really fabulous. I met some extremely beautiful women the last few weeks. I envy you, yeah. This girl is really attractive. She really, is. Uh, Thank you very she's much. She's beautiful. You're very kind. Mm. Yes, are you, are you uh, Israeli or... or um, yes, Polish originally, but Israeli. That's amazing. That's, a, that's an odd, uh, a rich cross-section of humanity rolled up into one um, incredible... <laughs> Let's see, I was in the back row. Let's see how long it takes for it to work its way down. In fact, the whole audience. I have to do. I'll do this first. And now a few words for the new year from Budweiser, King of Beers.
all over the world tonight, people are greeting one another with a raised glass and the words Happy New Year. And so a toast from the Budweiser people to the many friends of The Tonight Show. To 1966, live life, every golden minute of it. Enjoy Budweiser, every golden drop of it. Happy New Year. Woody, I've known you for what, a couple of years? At least a couple of years. Oh, yeah. Or longer than that, I guess. I see it's about three years now. Yeah. And when you come on, this, when we sat around, I never know whether you're telling me the truth or you're making this stuff up about me like all the girls now. Oh, well, that, that's... You lie or is this for real? Th that was true. I am uh, a compulsive liar, though. I, I, I will not hesitate to lie to prove my, my point all the time. I, I had a, uh, a bad childhood, and I lied to compensate for... for, uh, for uh... My parents did not want me when I was just... That's true. They put a live teddy bear in my crib when I was young. Huh? <laughs> they were really strict with me. I had to be home 9.30 prom night. When I was to get prom 9.30? Yeah. I made a reservation at the Copacabana for 5 o'clock, you know. <laughs> I took my date and we watched them set up. <laughs> I was once invited when I was a kid to Seymour Gutkin's birthday party. Can I tell you this story? Seymour Gutkin. Yes, and I loathe birthday parties because my mother used to make me wear my cousin's hand-me-downs all the time, and she was not my size. You know, it was really humiliating for me. <laughs> and, and really, so I wouldn't lose them. My mother used to pin my mittens to my sleeves all the time, you know, and that day I had on a short sleeve shirt. And I look like this. I'm pinned into it, you know, just <laughs> strangling. And I was, without question, the most adorable kid when I was young. I used to identify with Superman. I, I thought Superman and I had many traits in common when I was... Because he used to go into phone booths all the time and remove his clothing, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I couldn't stop myself, you know. And I took my parents' best tablecloth, their Hotel Dixie tablecloth, you know. And, uh, they honeymooned at the Hotel Dixie. I didn't know and, that. And, uh, the last night there, my father stole the tablecloth, so it shouldn't be a total loss, you know. <laughs> I believe you. And I tied it around my neck, and I draped it behind me, and I looked very menacing, really supermanish, you know? And I tuck it underneath my little shirt, and I go out on the BMT subway in Brooklyn to the Gutkin Affair, and I'm coming into the Avenue J station, and I look out on the platform, and I see Hermina Jaffe <laughs> being molested. Five years old, but a swinger, you know? <laughs> <laughs> her meaning was... Yeah, because she had an overbite. And that's... Uh, <laughs> she had the biggest overbite in Brooklyn. Well, at that age, that's... She used to eat a piece of toast and finish the outer edge first off. Huh? <laughs> Train pulls up and the door's open. And I leap out on the platform and I pull out my cape behind me, you know. And she's being attacked by Guy de Maupassant Rabinowitz, one of the worst kids <laughs> in the world. What? In the early 1940s, in the Roosevelt Dewey election, his parents voted for Hitler. <laughs> I said, to him, I said to him, take your hands off, uh, Gida. And he said to me, knock off, four eyes. He always told me, knock off. You know? And I'm all set to hit him, and the doors to the subway close on my cape, and the train pulls out, you know? I hang on the outside of the BMT. Um... That's a, that is a true... true. You've had a fascinating child. I have had. I, can I tell one of the quick subway stories? Yeah, we got a minute or so. I yeah. was once. Listen to this. <laughs> Terrorized as an adolescent on the BMT, I was on my way to an amateur music contest when I was... I come from a semi-musical family. You should know that. My father used to play the tuba when he was a... You know, he tried to play Flight of the Bumblebee on the tuba. And he blew his liver out through the horn. You know? <laughs> and I'm on the train, and he's... Twelve hoods run on the train, but really hairy knuckle types, you know? Apparently they just come from a settlement house, you know? Because they were dribbling a social worker through the car. <laughs> <laughs> and they stand over me and they start cursing and screaming, you know, and tearing up seats and fibbing, you know, and just... <laughs> fibbing? <laughs> Being negative, and I don't say anything. I just look down, I continue to read Heidi, you know? <laughs> The leader grabs me by my tongue and he lifts me up very quickly and he snapped his knee up violently and I did one of the greatest imitations of Lily Pons you've ever heard. 
<laughs> I hit an M over high C. So. <laughs> well, I'm two hours late for the music. Huh? No, no wonder you have this trouble. I now. came in third, however. Oh, that's good. That's good. I won two weeks at interfaith camp. And I was sadistically beaten by boys of all races and creeds. <laughs> I'm glad we took that shot of the audience. It'll help the police make identification on your way. <laughs> Woody just handed me a note here. A lady called in on the phone or what? Yes. Says your tie is crooked. It was when she oh, called sir. in before, and I thought I would deliver this. Thank you very much. Those things always do that, don't they? It's much better now. I don't think you can. There, how's that? That's perfect. All righty. So and so. Commercial? Yeah. I better lay out then. That'd be too funny for this. Now, a word from one of our sponsors, L&M Filter Cigarettes. side is for people who want taste in a cigarette and plenty of it. Come on over to the L&M side, just for the taste of it. Venez tous du côté L&M, venez-y comme tous les gens du goût, venez donc vous serez content de vous, oui venez tous du côté L&M, come on over to the L&M side. Just for the taste of it. Every time we have our friends, the Muppets, on the show, they come up with something vastly clever. Tonight, they've, uh, they have prepared two small sketches. The first one concerns the scene, which is probably being acted out all over the country at this moment, since there's always someone who's left out of the celebration of New Year's Eve. So would you welcome, please, the very talented Muppets. <laughs> Let me in, I hear music, let me in, open up the door, let me in, I hear laughter, I don't want to weep no more, please open the door to a stranger who's weary of trouble and strife, I'll bring you a song on my banjo and tell you the cares of my life. Let me in, I hear music. Let me in, open up the door. Let me in, I hear laughter. I don't want to weep no more. St. Paul, as soon as their sheriff forgives me, I hope to be back with them all. Let me in, I hear laughter, let me in, open up the door, let me in, I hear music. 
Jim Henson, who is the creator of the Muppets, will be back. They're going to do another little uh, vignette here for us. Remember Kermit the Frog? Yeah. Kermit has been with us several times, so we're just making... This. It's fascinating stuff, you know it? Yeah. When it's done Great. well? We all set? All set. So let's visit once again the Muppets. Ha, 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 ha. 
Jim Hansen and the Muppet. Jim. That's one of the cleverest things I've seen in a long time. They do a great thing. Jim Henson and the Muppets. And now here's Caroline O'Connor, Standard Brand's own Miss New Year's. Caroline? Hi, everybody. Oh, uh, what is all this? Chase and Flamborn Coffee. We're having a real swinging party, aren't we? No, but coffee at a party? Why, certainly, who ever heard of a good party without heftier Chase and Sanborn Coffee? Well, maybe uh, it's... Uh, uh, for the crew. You're playing favorites again? No, no, now, don't you worry, Ed. You'll get your Chase and Sanborn later. A big cup. Good. Full of heftier flavor. Extra richness, extra flavor. Meanwhile, how about some help over here? What would you like? Well, why don't you fill this dish up with some real delicious planter's dry roasted nuts? Mm -hmm. oh, These are good, aren't they, huh? They certainly are. They're crispy good. So dry to the touch. They really are, you know? Sure enough, yeah. And light to the taste. Mm -hmm. You know, dry roasted means they're made with absolutely no fats or oils that add calories. You're trying to tell me something. Oh, no, no, not at all. Just reminding everybody that the best of parties are even better with heftier Chase and Sanborn coffee and Planters dry roasted nuts. Here's another good friend of ours who's got one of the best baritone voices to be found anyway, anywhere. We refer to him as the Tex Ritter of the Metropolitan Opera. Would you welcome, please, William Walker. Bill.
Thank you, John. I was kind of hoping you'd do something like Blueberry Hill, but that was... <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question now. It's about 13 minutes before 1 o'clock in the morning. Does this bother you singing this late? Well, I don't know. I try to gear my day to when I'm going to sing during the day. You know, uh, at the opera house, you have to sing at 10 o'clock in the morning for rehearsals often. And then you have performance. You try to... In other words, I try to pace myself during the day. I take a nap in the afternoon, and I don't sleep too late, because if you do, then you have to vocalize and work and get everything, all the juices going again. You know? Most people, the voice starts to go late in the, late in the evening or early in well, the morning. Well, I, I took a nap this afternoon. I knew I was going to sing late tonight, so, you know. You really took a nap? How about that? Sure. Why, my How about gosh. that? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Did they a read a serious... bedtime story to you? <laughs> I have a little girl who reads me bedtime stories from time to time. How are your youngsters? Oh, they're fine, thanks. My little girl is, is uh, six, and we were terribly... She's seven. Excuse me, seven. She's uh, terribly concerned about... We weren't how, surprised. How old is she, Bill? She's, uh, <laughs> she's uh, as far as I remember... Take your time. It's uh, all right. Thank you. Would you mind helping me with this? What is this? No, she's seven, and she was very aware of uh, Christmas and and the myths that are involved with it and so we had a horrible time trying to surprise her all the time so we never could find any way to to really surprise this child at christmas so this year we were going to get her a cat a siamese cat and we just decided that we'd tell her we weren't going to get her one so she would really be surprised and so this created sort of a trauma at our house because nancy came in from school and at and at lunchtime and she began to cry and her mother said what are you crying about she said, I'm afraid I'm not going to get a cat for Christmas. And so Marcy says, well, Nancy, we talked all of this out. We know exactly why we can't have a cat. It's just not practical. said, what made you think you might ever get one? And Nancy looked up at my wife, and she says, the look on your face. And Marcy says, well, what kind of look on my face? And she said, one like you have right now. <laughs> so, you know, you can't disguise it. But she, gave her the, she got Oh, yeah, she got, we got two, in fact, and... Uh, we named them. We named them Frank and Jesse. So, they're after the James. Uh, after the James, the James brothers, cast yeah. so. brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not. Uh, I'll get mail. I'm not a cat lover. I wasn't either. Are you? You are. I've now? never owned a cat. And of course, my wife and, and my. Do you know daughter. why I'm against cats? Why? Because I figure when you take a, a, a cat in your home and you feed it, and you get, you know, and you give it shelter, that it ought to come to you when you call. You know, I want the cat well, to come here. When yes. I say come here, and the cat sits there and looks at you. They don't do anything. My kids Where they come the up and they go way. like this. Right. If I'm feeding them, I want them to come over and sit well, here. You'd be, you'd be That's surprised. my feet. You'd be surprised. That's right. I call my children, and they don't come either, so I guess it's all right. <laughs> Edward, are you standing by there in your... Say, we gotta, you got to have that suit back at one. We better wrap this up. <laughs> he has his own. He has his movies and things, you know. <laughs> yeah. Road eight for me. That's a great. Sorry movie. about that. Thank you. And now for Antisept Road Aids, here's Ed, who's an authority on three-way action. I think you have that wrong, John. I'm not the authority on three-way action. F and F's the authority on three-way action that you want when you are suffering from painful minor sore throat pain. When you have that that raspy. <laughs> rugged sore throat and it hurts. Well, that's why there's salicylamide and antisept throat aids to soothe painful throat membranes. That's why there's Banacol to kill millions of germs on contact. And that's why there's Turpin Hydrate to relieve congestion. Relief, yes, and pleasant tasting, too. You will like the cool, minty flavor of antisept throat aids as they dissolve in your mouth. Remember, for a cold, follow whatever advice you think best, rest, aspirin, or cold capsule. But for that miserable sore throat, get soothing relief with Antisept Throat Aids. 
brought to you by the folks who make FNF cough lozenges, which also contain germ-killing Banacol. The girl, I just sneaked back there to see who was... Bill Ford and Mimi Hyde. Bubbles. Oh, Mimi, how are you? Philip? Hello, Johnny. Hello. Philip. Hello. Hi, Woody. Nice to see you. Hello, Bill. Mimi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Bill. This is an understatement. This is an understatement. Put your hands in on those skinny. Did you just finish Funny Girl? I'm still in it, I think. I'm going to... No, I didn't. I know, but... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mimi and yeah. Bill open in, uh, in Funny Girl, uh, December the 27th. And uh, great reviews. Oh, Johnny, weren't they wonderful? Yeah. I think uh, the, probably the nicest review of all was from your producer, Mr. Stark. Boy, he was... What is that? <laughs> sort of a Harpo Marx uh, comment. <laughs> what do you mean, though, so about our producer? Huh? Well, he, he came backstage open night after the show, and he gave me a big hug, and, and he kind of even gave Phil a hug, sort of. You know. <laughs> Talk to you tomorrow, Art. <laughs> but not Art do for vacation. <laughs> sort of a Boy Scout hug. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm real happy well, for you. Well, he said some very beautiful things. He says, uh, you know, you've done it now, and I can really go home with a full heart and say that you came through, and you know what he said? What? If you can do it on the Tonight Show meme, you can do it anywhere. <laughs> hey, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm real thrilled for you, really. And you win the balloon. <laughs> oh, they're hugging again. <laughs> they're doing that again. Hey, well, have you been any place since you finished? Did you go to a party at all between? No, no. We, we, we got off the stage and, and dried off a bit and came right over here. Yeah. We've been panting it, you know. And we got our, we got our a new New Year's Eve announcement for you, John. No. Oh. Happy New Year! Your car has just appreciated five hundred dollars. How true! Hey, maybe. Maybe tell tell him the tell him the joke you told me the other night. Uh, you told it here. Which one, John? No, no, you know the lady sitting at the uh, with the. Oh, 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 yeah, do this. Silliest, thing. silliest story. I love it. Oh, it's a great story, though. Tell do it, do it. You want to be the lady? I'll be the lady. Great. All right, you be What's the lady. That? That's the thing. I'll oh, that's a, okay. A yeah. Prompt for okay, you there. that's it. That's set my up, duck. Set up the scene and do the. Folks, that's a duck. <laughs> that's a duck, folks. Where's that balloon? There it is. That's a duck. Okay. Uh, a lady uh, who's had a few New Year's Eve drinks goes into a bar and she's got a duck under her arm. And she sort of staggers into there, and she staggers into that old bar, and she sits down, and there's a stagger in there, old girl. And she sits down at the bar, and there's one guy in the bar that's been there since Christmas. Let me order my booze. <laughs> hey, bartender, give me a drink of whiskey. <laughs> And this guy that's been in there since Christmas looks at her and he says, what are you doing with that pig? That ain't a pig, that's a duck. I was talking to the duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, we'll be right back. Silly night this has been. Silly night. What do you open? You open where? At the Americana Hotel here in New York? Uh, yes, at the Royal Box of the Americana, January 17th. And you can hear these same jokes at a higher price. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's a it. lovely room, Woody. Yeah. 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 yeah, we had a ball in there, didn't we, hon? Yeah. It's just great. Really? It's a really groovy room, yeah. They're right around you, you know. I was there one evening in my life. Uh, I substituted when uh, Pearl Bailey was ill. We, we came down there and did a oh, show. Oh, that's right. That's right. Is that right? Uh, for her there, yeah. And it, and it looked like a good room. Yeah, it is. 
Anguilla is shortly. Is, is the movie out yet, Our Man from Flint? No, it's going to be released in uh, January. Our Man Flint. Our Man Flint? Yes. Here in, in New York? Jim Coven, yes. Our Man Flint. Middle of January. Middle of January. Yes. That'll be in New York. Bill, are you going on tour or staying home or what? No, I'm, I'm at the Met until the 15th of January singing the broadcast to the Queen of Spades. But, uh, I am uh, going to take a few days off next week. Woodrow, you're going to be here one night, aren't you? But, uh, oh. <laughs> ah, the ah. but Monday night, Henry Morgan is going to be here. Tuesday, Sammy Davis is going to be oh. here. Hey, Woody Dad. Allen will be here Wednesday night, right? Yeah, um, yes. Right over right. here, Corbett Monica on Thursday and Bill Dane on Friday. John? Yeah. It's really, for honest to goodness, hats and horns tonight. It yeah. really is. <laughs> Finally. Hats Finally, and horns. Finally, it Whoopee. really happened. Hats and horns. Hey, I think... I thank you all for coming tonight, and uh, before we kind of finish, I would like to thank everybody at NBC and the whole Tonight Show staff for making this past year such a pleasant one for me and our uh, whole gang, and we're going to be here all of next year, right. and I thank you all for, for a little while longer anyway. So thank you all. Good thing when you got one, Johnny. Yeah, tell him, kid, I was talking to the duck. Good night, Dealer. Good night, Bill. Good night, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Good night.